Well, you know, I'm going to go back a little bit in history. In 1949, Cal Poly lost to University Pacific, 0 to 88. Eddie LeBaron was their coach at the time. So they hired a new coach called Roy Hughes. And his first year, the record was 3 and 7. And the next year, he recruited some JC transfers and a lot of freshmen. And I was one of those freshmen that came in. And we thought that we would like to turn this thing around a little bit. Come 1953, we were going to have a pretty tough schedule starting out with Fresno State University. The papers were saying that we were going to lose by 25 or 30 points. Well, that just made us feel pretty good about that. So at the end, in, at the end of the game, the score was 27 to 6. Cal Poly won the game. And so we thought we could do better than this. We think we could win all our games. So the season went on. And at the end of the season, we had a record of 9 and 0, highest scoring team in the nation. Only, we had a 395 points that we scored and 65 points against us. And we had some great athletes that went into the pro ranks. One was Stan Sheriff, one was Alex Bravo. Uh, we had people like uh, Perry Jeters, uh, one of the better running backs in the nation at the time. Like uh, J Bob Neal was our quarterback and Jim Miller, one of our halfbacks. Bob Lawson, the 230 pound fullback who ran a 10-100. We had Alex Bravo, 9-7, and we had run a fullback up the middle, an end sweep either side. But that type of backfield, we didn't have to pass. Well, I, I came to Cal Poly on a, a $250 scholarship. But we did have a great team. We went 9-0 and and the highest scoring team in the nation in, in 1953. And uh, we we're real proud of that. Some of those players were, were really good players. Uh, the Vic Picola in the line, he uh, would pull and, and uh, uh, he, he got heck one time because um, he stepped on my toe. And I pulled my toenail off and uh, Roy Hughes just gave him hell for that and it wasn't his fault. Roy Hughes had a great mind and he believed in perfection. We would run a play at practice five and six and seven times until the timing was just perfect. You'd have to, uh, all depends who was the fullback or the running back, who was the guard, who had, what kind of speed did they have, and you had to know, uh, you had to mesh to make sure the play would work. But that, uh, to have been a part of that, and especially after, after having been uh, here after they lost to UOP 88 to nothing, and to be involved in turning the entire football program around with some of my fellow teammates and it was just rewarding to have been able to be a part of the football program being turned around and to see it have the success that it's had in 1980 and the success that they've had since. I'm just honored to be a part of that program.